Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening inside the city of Missoula and beyond. So I have some guests on here from Missoula Aging Services. I got Brian and Kathy here to talk about Kitchen Tables, which is an event that's coming up in November to have people talk about, uh, basically, it's estate planning for your health. So it's uh, you may not be unhealthy now, but it's to plan for the future about certain um unhealthiness that may occur in the future. So they'll be talking about that a little bit later in the show, but I'm going to kick things off with a little bit of weather and a whole lot of news. So let's start off with our favorite, the weather. It is currently 45 degrees outside. <sighs> you, you know, if you've been living in this warm temperature for so long, to have it dip down that low, it's 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 very uh, um, eye-opening for sure because uh, I've been op- leaving my window open overnight and I've been kind of nestled up in, the, in my blankets and stuff. But this week, your high is going to be, today especially, is going to be a high of 80 degrees, so it's a good day to get out and about, and it is the last day of your of uh, Karis uh, Park activities, which include out to lunch and dinner in the park, which is downtown tonight, tomorrow night. So Thursday, your high is going to be 71, so by the midday, you can expect those temperatures to be uh, in the 70s, and then you can expect that to continue on and throughout the weekend. So we're going to have mostly sunny skies, to be good temperatures. Um, I have some news about your fires, but it doesn't seem like the fire smoke is going to be coming around here anytime soon. So let's talk about some news items. In Power Montana, and in part with many local organizations, including the mayor of Missoula, John Engen, who talked during uh, Monday's ceremonies of the Rainbow Crossing. The mayor has promised that any vandalizing of the crosswalk will be met with swift justice by the Missoula City Police and their power washer. So here is Mayor John Engen talking during that uh, Rainbow Crossing ceremony. Years of mayor uh, is an actual living, breathing human being, and uh, uh, I sponsored one of the one of the stripes in the crosswalk uh, because my best friend in the world is a gay man who left Missoula 30 years ago because he didn't believe he could be who he was in this place that I love, and the fact that when he comes back now, he believes that he could live in Missoula, Montana, and be who he is, and be loved by his friends and his family and a community it makes a world of difference. All right, so um, the Rainbow Crossing will be um, uh, surveillance through uh, um, surveillance systems and cameras and stuff, so any, vandaliza- in, 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 any vandalizing of the property will be met with swift justice as well. But of course, in other news, the city also, the mayor had an, uh, a long meeting tonight, um, a meeting that lasted for seven hours, 48 minutes, um, and about 15 seconds of city council, uh, they met um, to approve the fiscal year 2019 budget for the city of Missoula. Comments for and against fell along the lines of uh, Missoula's a place people want to come to start a business, while critics, uh, particularly city council member uh, Jesse Ramos, said that people are being taxed out of their homes because the Missoula's spending problem. So I'll talk a little, bit, a little about this during my city council report later in the show. Um, in state news, Beartooth Wilderness reopened for campers after wildfire was contained. But regulation on camping has changed. Beginning September 1st, Elk Creek Road will be closed. Hunters and campers using the entrance will need to bring their necessities on their back so they will not be able to drive up there. Uh, those camping anywhere in the Beartooth uh, areas are allowed to stay a maximum of 16 days at a campsite. Um, all sites are designated. The Shell Rock Fire was started on August 11th, and um, the Wilderness Management Area was closed on August 14th, and just recently, just this last couple of days, the, uh, they're reopening it up slowly. The fire burned just under... 500 acres at the most northeast point of the areas, 36,000 acres located in the Lewis and Clark and Cascade counties. The Beartooth provides wilderness habitats for a variety of species, including mule deer and elk. So let's take a look at the Encena web, which is your local access to find um, all the fires that are happening in the state of Montana. Here's a couple examples. I'm going to go to the How Ridge fire, um, which is affecting um, over... Uh, Glacier National Park. It is currently at 12,420 acres with a 12% containment. Um, Juliet Fire, it's uh, 729 acres and it was updated 14 hours ago. Of course, the Powell Ridge Fire, which has uh, had people from Essex um, leave their homes um, at 
712 acres, it's 45% contained. So those are some of the fires you guys can look up in web yourself um, to find out more of the fires that are affecting you in your local areas. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, okay, so uh, a big event that happened over the weekend, there was a mass shooting in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, they're doing an EA game conference for uh, Madden Football 2019 when a shooter came in and uh, shot up a tournament filled with rooms of people. Um, David Katz, who, 24, is the alleged suspect who shot up the tournament, ending with him taking his own life. Katz had a history of psychiatric issues, and court records show that his parents repeatedly attempted to obtain treatment for him, according to the Baltimore Sun. Uh, thus far, uh, three upcoming tournaments have been canceled as a result. So those are th some of the things that are happening in your news. I have uh, an art clip for you guys, and this is an art clip from the Missouri Art Museum, and it will be ending in mid-September. And when I come back, I'll have my guests, Kathy and Brian from Missoula Agent Service, to talk about kitchen tables. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back here with Brian and Kathy. You guys are with Missoula Agent Services and you're here to talk about an event. And just so you guys at home know, is that Missoula Agent Services promotes the dignity, independence, and health of Asian adults and their caregivers. Very good. Yep. I'm trying to say that a lot more because I know that you guys have to say it every single time, exactly. but I want to say it for you guys. Yeah. But you. Kitchen Tables is an event that you guys, uh, that Missoula Agent Services is hosting that's happening in the Monday, first Monday and Wednesday in November, which is the... Fifth and the seventh. Yep. Right. And this happens just like an afternoon... Uh, uh, from one to four, uh, okay. one thirty to four, and uh, we bring people from the community uh, around tables, we call them kitchen tables, to talk about their wishes, about their lives uh, as they proceed, and particularly what they would want when they can no longer speak for themselves um, because of um, accident or disease or anything like that um, as medicine takes us into those years, um, we often need help. So we help people to pick advocates who can speak for them and give them a little experience in talking about what their wishes are. Cool. And like um, what Missoula Services does for the community, especially for 55 and older, this it, they also do a lot of estate plannings and stuff along that lines. But this one is particularly not uh, about money planning. Correct. It's about health care. Yep. And it's about finding an advocate and uh, being able to let your medical team know what it is that you want and what you don't want. And the really interesting thing, as long as you can speak for yourself, the, uh, the provider, the health care provider is going to ask you what you want. But it is very likely that in some occasions you won't be able to speak for yourself. And that's when you need to have a person who knows what your values are and what's important to right. you so that they will make decisions that you would have made if you could speak. Yep. And it's like when somebody has like, like a do not resuscitate order, but this is a little further in depth to be like, like certain specifics, uh, like if you have like one medical issue versus another medical issue, just how people can help you. Exactly. Exactly. And what your values are. What's important to yeah. you. 
um, what what you want to do with the, the last uh, part of your life, um, whether you want to be be sure that you are able to be outdoors or whether you're happy to spend it um, inside, uh, specific things like that. I, I particularly have certain music that I want. Um, I want to be sure that there's chocolate on the menu. <laughs> and um, those are the sorts of specific things that we can uh, tell our loved ones. Awesome. Um, like, for example, me and my grandma just turned 90, and she also has a bunch of family members that are all uh, have opinions. <laughs> and it's something that we were talking about before the show, and you guys are, I mean, like, it's always good to have a clear plan about it, who is going to be the person kind of running your uh, uh, business operations, because a lot of times you always have that family member who's really just, like, uh, money-wise, right. but then who has no idea like how to take care of you. Like exactly. he doesn't know what you want. But so this is a very good idea just to have a conversation at these tables to be like, what do I do? Exactly. exactly. And we see this as a gift that we give to our family members rather than something that's difficult and and something to shy away from. And what we're looking for is is to avoid the situation where the uh, the physician says, "Well, what would uh, your mom want?" and you say, "I don't have a clue." That, that's what we want to avoid because that is very unhelpful. And um, once you have the conversations with your, with your loved ones, they then are in tune with what's important to you. Mm -hmm. In some cases, people say, I want to live just as long as I can and I want everything done. And other folks might say, you know, what's really important to me is quality of life. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to be uh, in conversation with my, my, my loved ones. There is no right answer. It's right. All, what is true for you is what's most important. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit more about this event. Um, where can people find more information about this? They can call Aging, Missoula Aging Services or they can go on the website and go into the Eventbrite that they have and uh, we like people to register. It is free, but uh, there still is a limited capacity. So we and, uh, want people to sign up in advance. And we are partnered not only with MAS, Missoula Aging Services, but also the Food Bank and Community Center. And that's where it's actually going to be held on uh, November, the first Monday and Wednesday in November from 1.30 until 4. And the Food Bank is such a wonderful location, too. Yeah. Um, you, you have to RSVP. Right, and you can RSVP online, or you can call them at the number. Um, uh, the website is MissoulaAgentServices.org. Great, yeah. and it doesn't have to be age restriction. It's for everybody. Exactly, exactly. eighteen and over. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Is there Thank anything you. else you want to say? Um, just that we're all potential. Um, proxies or advocates, as well as uh, we can find ourselves in a place where we can speak for ourselves. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Kathy and Brian, um, we'll be right back right after this. Later, the building has been occupied over and over again by writers and artists and musicians. Some people as briefly as two or three days. <laughs> Some people as many as 20 years. Jay, Jay Rommel was here for 20 years. Wow. Um, and so the, it's really rich with history. The, I just want to say the show is not every single person that went through the building. It was very difficult to locate some of the people and some of the people just have evaporated because our records are kind of scanty for the earlier years. Um, if you know of someone that had a studio that was not notified or you have their contact information, let me know. The show is up till August the 18th and it will be open Thursdays from 2 to 6, Fridays from 2 to 6, and Saturdays from 2 to 4. So there are 10 to 4, or 10 to 2, sorry, like during the, during the market time. Um, Tonight's program will, will, will review uh, our history the last 150 plus years of the Missoula City Band. We started together in 1865 and we're still here, folks. But the old man who kept it together would start every year of every concert, every first time, over and over and over. Here is old comrades because we may have been separated for the last nine months, but in the end, we are all old comrades. <laughs> And 
so the Missouri gained that importance as being apparently navigable all the way up. But navigable to whom? People using bull boats? Um, you know, it was not being used at that point in time in that way by the people they were asking about its navigability. Yeah. Kevin, what were all the Native American maps that you showed us written or drawn on? Oh, the medium. Um, well, uh, in the, uh, the journals, um, it, there are lots of different media that people use, and most of them are extremely expedient. I mean, the exception is, of course, a document like Tunes or a document like a, a, a birch bark scroll. You know, these sort of ceremonial documents that were preserved in medicine bundles are extremely valuable and had to be taken care of. Um, but maps that were just directions, you know, like the Lewis and Clark expedition was not asking for the history of anybody. They wanted directions. And and, um, and at one point in Clark's journals, he sounds kind of impatient with two and eight. He keeps talking too much about all this stuff. All these years later, I wonder what would have happened if I hadn't been thinking about him so vividly just right before I got that letter. If I hadn't had such a crappy, crappy date right before I got that letter. And if I didn't take the arrival of that letter as some kind of karmic sign from the gods, right? Like... It, it just seemed too magical to be true. And instead of, what if I'd just taken it as a funny coincidence? And finally, what if the US government would have been willing to just grant him a two-week tourist visa to come and see me in New York City? That um, was not happening, and I am a hopeless romantic. I was then, and I think I probably still am. So within five minutes, I'm on the phone with him in my apartment. Within a day, I have a plane ticket to go and see him. Within a month, we're in his parents' little wooden hut in rural Paraguay, and we're telling them, <laughs> that we, we're going to get married because that's the only way we can get him into the U.S. legally to give the relationship a try. <laughs> yeah. And so four months later, I went back down to Paraguay, which is in itself another story, a really wacky one with kind of like reality show dashing around the countryside to get all the various documents. But we did it successfully. And before I went down the second time, I told my somewhat skeptical friends and family, um, you know, I've got no idea if this is going to work, but I'm not sure enough that it won't. Not to give it a try, I figure out what, what I've got to lose. Dating scene in New York is really, <laughs> it's that bad. So Ooh-wee, it's time for some city council. Hey, and if you're uh, seeing how um, I'm kind of all, uh, all giddy, it's because this was the, one of the longest city council uh, meetings in history of the Missoula. Seven hours, 48 minutes, and about 15 seconds runtime on the SIRE website. Of course, they did take a break in the, in the middle of it after four hours of meeting. So... Um, what can I say? Most of the meeting was bogged down through public comment, and a lot of the biggest themes of the public comment was City of Missoula is taxing us out of our homes, but the City of Missoula is not all to blame as we get into your City Council report. There's a lot of people to blame, a lot of fingers being pointed at, and a lot of different things happen here. But here's John Engen. He talks about budgets that cause premiums to go up and just about some of the concerns of some of the citizens. So here is Mayor John Engen. Uh, as I have said over and over again, if I didn't have to raise taxes, I wouldn't. It's not much fun. The fact of the matter is that uh, I'm charged with uh, the responsibility of making sure that we continue to provide the service that makes this city work, and I believe that this budget does that. With that, Ms. Griffin. All right, so I kind of kept that brief because there, there was a whole bunch of things I'm going to try to get through. Um, so anyways, here is a public comment, and I think this kind of sums up uh, some of the... Um, I don't know. This, I don't want to say this sums up everything, but this is a, a this. I think this is a pretty good uh, idea of just how uh, people have reacted to taxes and how people have overreacted with the tax increase. It wasn't the city council that passed the the levy or the bond, whatever it was, to get a new library. They may have encouraged it. It wasn't the city council who wanted to pay for a new regional park. It wasn't the city council who raised their taxes dealing with the public schools. It was your neighbors. It was your neighbors. Our founding fathers understood the evil of democracy, where 51% could impose their will on 49%. 
And that's what your neighbors did. They're not totally to blame. It's you and your neighbors. And so you've gotten somewhat of a bad rap. But you can do one thing. You can lead. You can resist the current that goes towards increased taxation. You can resist that current. And you can lead against it. All right, so that was uh, Pascal Redfern uh, talking from uh, public comment. Of course, many of the public comments uh, many the, uh, were really good points. You can watch the seven-hour meeting for all those public comments as well, but I'm just going to get right into the thick of it. Jesse Ramos talks uh, to lessen the city council's payments for duty. So he, uh, we'll skip ahead to the meeting. Uh, one of the solutions that Jesse Ramos says is that uh, the city council members should take a weed wage decrease move that we not only decline our pay raise for the council and the mayor, but we take a 3.85% reduction in our pay equal to that of the property taxes, so that way we can truly know what it's like to be a taxpayer of the city of Missoula and what we're doing with our spending increases. What's the dollar amount associated with that, Mr. Ramos? Dollar amount uh, would be, so it, it depends. I had a hard time tracking down your salary in particular, but um, I think that an extra amount. Pretty easy. Mine is uh, about $90,000, and if you did 3.5% of that, something on the order of 2400 bucks. Yep, and then it would be about equal uh, with all 12 council members, roughly. All right, so that was one of the motions that uh, Jesse Ramos suggested, and this is uh, the reaction from Gwen Jones. I think there is great value in service, and this job doesn't pay a lot. And I went back and looked at the hours that I put in. On my lower weeks, I put in about 20 hours a week. But I have a lot of 40-hour weeks for city council, and I also have a family, and I also practice law part-time, and sometimes I'm up until midnight writing appeals. When I put in a 40-hour work week, I'm making less than $7 per hour. That's less than minimum wage. I think there's great value in service, and if anyone wants to shadow me from the media or from the community and see what I do in a week on city council, be my guest. It's a lot of hard work. And I guess it kind of boils down to me, I feel like if people personally want to forego their raise or donate it to charity or take all of their city council income and house someone for a year and truly make a difference, that's, that's great. But last Friday, when Mr. Ramos sent out a news press release regarding this issue that he had uh, latched on to. I was in five hours of meetings. I met with a constituent for another hour. I spent two hours on emails. I wasn't writing press releases. I was working on legislation that would help make this a better place and looking at all of the issues that I work on. So that's how I spend my time on city council and I think it has value and it's very important to not devalue public service. So I am not in favor of this. All right. So uh, among Gwen Jones, uh, Jordan Hess uh, was kind of um, at a breaking point, And this is what he had to say. And I think it's wholly inappropriate for us to do that. Um, the reason that we do that is so that the body does not set its own pay, because just like you are attempting to decrease it, someone else could attempt to increase it. Um, Congress has the 27th, we have the 27th Amendment to the Constitution that states that if the Congress is going to set its pay increase, it shall not uh, take effect until after an inter intervening election. Um, and I just think that it is, um, it is a distraction from the issue. I mean, it is a, a portion, and I would gladly, after this budget is done, someone talked about looking at the 2020 budget, I would gladly next week refer or, or entertain discussion on um, discussing this, uh, this mechanism, which has been in place since a previous mayor served, which was uh, in 2003 that this, that, this was, that this process was last amended. Um, but I will not subvert this process um, by which we uh, set our, uh, by which we don't set our policy. There's a, there's a process uh, that, sets our, that, that sets the salary. Um, so I think it's a diversion. I'd gladly revisit the process uh, as part of um, future budgets, um, but I, I don't think it's appropriate. All right. So um, 
All right. So basically, needless to say, the city of Missoula um, didn't vote in favor of any of the amendments that Jesse Ramos had um, to decrease wages or to prevent the increase in uh, city council wages. Um, let's see. Among the amendments, uh, Jesse Ramos uh, attempted to amend many motions within the budget, all of which failed. Um, so here are some of the items that he wanted to um, exclude from the uh, 2019 fiscal year budget. Uh, fare free buses with Mountain Line is an example. $100,000 goes into basically having the city of Missoula people ride the mountain lion buses for free. He wanted to take that away, um, reduce the budget and delete the aquatics funding uh, paid by general fund, uh, which um, is a good chunk of the Missoula Parks and Recreation, um, the aquatic center, which includes Splash Montana and um, the currents as well. So many uh, things happening within there. There's the downtown master plan update, which is $50,000. There's the park district union raises, which is $147,000. Road district raises $81,000, which, you know, there's the people who are used to fix the roads and the potholes. Lobbyists, $33,200 for the lobbyists that we have in Missoula. Uh, Missoula in motion, uh, completely get rid of Missoula in motion, uh, which is the bike advocacy in Missoula, which is $320,000, which includes Ben Weiss and his staff. Missoula Economic Partnership Contribution, which is $100,000. Missoula Cultural Council, which is $116,000, also known as Arts Missoula. Uh, Montana League of Cities and Towns, which is $25,000, Missoula C uh, City Cemetery Master Plan, which is $50,000, Parks and Recreation Program Growth Plan, uh, $46,000, um, Operation Jeffrey Park, $22,000, Permissive Mill Levies, and um, there's just a whole bunch of uh, uh, things that, they, that Jesse Ramos suggested that the city take out as a non-necessary uh, items to keep the city of Missoula running. Um, all of which failed by uh, city council meetings in a, um, I think it was a nine, nine to one vote because two uh, members were absent during this meeting. Uh, so of course, Jesse Ramos, uh, this is some of his final words he had to say during the, the end of the meeting. And here it is. Um, so I guess what's the point of living in Missoula if all of your excess income is spent through your taxes? Maybe somebody doesn't want to go to a park. Maybe somebody wants to uh, use their excess funding uh, to go to Disneyland, or maybe they want to use that to start a college savings bond for their child. What's the point of living here if the government is literally control, uh, it, literally in control of your recreation? If they've taken all of your money to the point where the only place you can recreate is where the government has designated that you can go for free? That is not the society that I want to live in, and I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. I'm an advocate of a free and open society where people can choose where they put their money, where people can choose where they invest, where people get to choose with their own money how much they want to pay their employees, not the government coming in and telling us that, that we know better how to spend your money. That's the message that people are getting tonight, is that we are up here telling them that, hey, you guys might be too stupid to know that we need this park. You might be too stupid to know that we need these arts, but we're smart enough to tell you that we know how to spend that money and make build this community uh, into a better place and that is not the society I want to live in I'm all right so that was Jesse Ramos he goes on for a couple more minutes on that as well but I just want to get an excerpt um, here's Gwen Jones um, he uh, reflects on the disparity of wages in the city of Missoula and this is what she had to say a shift so some entities are paying less and guess what some entities are paying more and I feel like like Dr. Phil's phrase, how's that working for you? Because I don't think it's working too well when people we have tied our property taxes so closely to our residential property taxes, our income to residential property taxes, and then we're in this economy where we have people moving in from out of state. We can't control that. This is We have no control over this. We can't tell people to not move to Missoula. But we have a lot of people coming here. We have more demand than supply in terms of our housing supply, and it's going up. So guess what? Jane Van Fossen is absolutely correct. There will be a valuation next year, and our properties will go up even more. And until we get some tax reform from our legislature and they start redistributing it a little, little bit, we're going to see more and more of this. And again, how is that working for you? In the meantime, tourism is currently our biggest industry in Montana. And we aren't getting any of those dollars that are coming in here. So that's the issue that I see. And I'm in favor of this budget because we have focused on essential services 
we can talk until we're blue in the face about some of these minor things, but they have value, and there are people in my, my ward who do value these, so I'm in favor of this. All right, so uh, the budget, uh, like I said, was passed. Uh, the fiscal year 2019 budget was passed, and also uh, the city says that 90% of the budget does go to the needs for the public, which include uh, two new city police officers, fire department wages, uh, there's a whole bunch of... Uh, uh, services here and there and of course there's that big chunk of parks and rec that Jesse Ramos thinks it shouldn't be going to but of course needless to say the city voted in favor of the budget if you would like to get involved with the fiscal year 2020 budget they will be starting to talk about it pr really soon um, they usually start working on the actual budget during a budget committee meetings uh, sometime in January February of the uh, next fiscal year so, uh, when it starts in January about so you guys can check all that out of course I want you guys to uh, educate yourselves and you can learn more about your city of Missoula by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us seven hours 45, 48 minutes and 15 seconds of a meeting, and I was able to get through it all because um, a lot of times there is a really uh, familiar theme with public comment, um, especially during this particular meeting, so I kind of got through that, um, but you guys can get through this meeting as well as I did, so this meeting... Um, is also considered one of the longest meetings in Missoula's city council history. So just letting you guys know that in advance. Of course, uh, no city council meetings are happening today or uh, city council is not meeting next Monday because it is Labor Day weekend and Monday is a uh, Labor Day. So we won't be having that. So let's talk about some things that are happening in MCAT. Let's not talk about the city anymore. You know, forget the city who, who you know, like that's, that's doing the whole thing. I just want to tell you guys that Saturday drop-ins are returning a week from this Saturday, which is happening September the 8th. So September 8th, Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Saturday drop-ins are back. If you would like to learn more about it, you can click on this uh, link that'll bring you to the YouTube um, PSA or YouTube commercial about um, Saturday drop-ins. Saturday drop-ins um, is a great way for kids to create. It, it, we primarily do stop animation for kids because we set up a kid in front of a computer and they create something out of inanimate objects. And kids, a lot of kids love doing stop animation, but we also have ways for kids to make some live action movies, um, some videos, uh, just kind of like give them a good introduction into media. And it's a, it is, it's a, MCAT is a great resource for anybody, um, which includes uh, orientation, which happens every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. If you or anyone in the community has an interest in media or getting started, maybe if you want to be a YouTuber, but you just don't know how to get to a certain point that you think you need to be, MCAT is the place to be to get you that uh, stepping stone that you need to get forward thinking in terms of that. So let's talk about uh, other social media type stuff. Wake Up Missoula. Um, you can find me on my website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter. Um, all you got to do is Google Wake Up Missoula, and you can find me. I have over a thousand uh, YouTube <laughs> videos devoted to my Wednesday, my, uh, Wednesday Friday shows. I, did, uh, I dropped Mondays uh, over a year ago because I just wanted a, a little tighter show, a lot more information, a lot of like throwing a bunch of information at you all at once, and then letting you kind of di digest it over the next couple of days. But it is usually current, so it's kind of hard to kind of watch old episodes. So um, that's why I post special videos um, on my website and more. But of course, um, speaking of special videos, I have a special video for you guys, courtesy of Graham Martin, who is a kid who grew up, then he started working here, and he's going to be going to college this year as well. So um, I've been here for quite a while, and uh, he made this nice little short video of behind the scenes over at the outdoor cinema. So here's th this, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. So stay with me. Austin. Oh! 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 Boy, I just found the perfect blend of beats. Just and nonsensical sounds that just not make any sense, no matter even if you know how to play piano. Wait for it. That'll never work on anything. <laughs> you play good. I have to redeem myself. All right. It's like the BC Boys, but but behind the scenes. <laughs> We do music. I mean, you guys ready for this? I don't think you're just gonna be as good. Cool. <laughs>
Uh, you two, film something interesting while I sit on shotgun and occupy. <laughs> sit on shotgun? How could you? Because I'm an adult now. Hey, you, hey. You two. <laughs> hey. Just because I'm got big, to. big physically. Bro, and so aren't you I, actually just volunteering? <laughs> yeah. Because you can't get any. Because I can't. You can't. Because I can't get any because Government. my welfare got all this stuff. <laughs> and they're like, oh, sorry, you can't be working a job. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you to have independence. We want you to basically be under the thumb of the government. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, but heard, like, You're heard, doing it wrong. You're doing the bike thing wrong, woman. You're biking wrong. You suck. Uh, she goes. Yeah, and she's like going back and forth and like kind of. Whenever somebody breaks the law, me and Josh like open up the windows and we're just like, You're breaking the law! <laughs> Well, 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 look, okay, right. road work ahead. I sure hope it does. <laughs> I'm Montana, Montana. I didn't mean to snap at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's such an awful, like, that's, that's so awful. I'm Montana, Montana. <laughs> I'm not Montana, Montana. Uh, I'm Montana, Montana. <laughs> of course I am. Oh! Ah! <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. It's my disappointment. <laughs> it's immeasurable. <laughs> so, Scott, what's the message to the people who filmed with us but are not here today? Like, getting behind the scenes. Why? Baby! <laughs> Where'd you go? I can finally be a tripod. Nobody, nobody can ever hey. understand what we're talking about. You've always been a tripod. We can never. We can never. Yeah. Since I, never, I passed, no passed out. Every single one of the behind the scenes has a mention of some kind of food or concessions. You're right. Yeah, and popcorn. Have, like, There's always popcorn, popcorn in There's every popcorn. thing. Yeah. There's never a single time. Except for the cup footage, and that was it. No Ch basketball today. Not Challenge. No, sir. Run. This is your achievement for Xbox. Uh, run to the gate. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I try to do something with my hand. See, this is what happens in America. We make our jobs fun, but sometimes people are too depressed. It's not communistic Russia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to tape this to you, buddy. I'm a ghost of Gmo. Can you can you hold this? Well, what? Could you just put your hand here while I take this? Oh, oh no, you got it, yeah. Yeah, he's Duh. a human. He's a human. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not an object. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not an object. Drink, drink and candy one up. <laughs> There's our dancing. Hey, you're, you're, you're our sign guy. <laughs> T-Post. T-Post. Return the slab. <laughs> All right, Photoshop this, Graham, please. Please Photoshop it so that it's in my fingers. Please. Lights, camera, you action. Camera, light, it's not helping at all. <laughs> Hold on. So this is what happens when we're done. The tables are there. Watch seconds. Grease. Watch Chris. A movie with no. So uh, it claims to have a story. And it looks like <laughs> it looks like it has a story, but. Oh. Nah. Oh. Hey Neil, guess what? You at Wendy's? You missed out. Oh. oh. 
Let me get off. Then get all this popcorn and candy, fun Lacroix. Mm. <laughs> Lacroix. It's like it's like when you have butter on your hands and you have to lick it off. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you still recording? Because um. Because yeah. life. No. Okay, let's don't talk to you. Get that camera out. Leave your stuff here. Okay. Get that camera out of my face. What is that? Movie? Grab your cell phone. Right? Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Austin, you hate attention? <laughs> you don't need to record everything like Azra does. I know, I'm gonna cut it unlike him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see how, how long that video took, right? Yeah, I edited this. We could just went that way. At least I turned my camera off at occasions. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? Because, like, this is. This is. Alright. Hey guys, welcome back. And that was behind the scenes of Outdoor Cinema Part 2. The only two parts that you're going to get from Outdoor Cinema. So that was the uh, season finale, I assume. <laughs> All right, anyways, um, let me think. Let me see. Okay, I'm just getting um, an art clip preempted for uh, the split between Wednesday and Thursday. So let's kick things off with... Wednesday events. This is courtesy of MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? MissoulaEvents.net. I was like, oh, well, you can just tell me. No, I can show you. Anyways, uh, starting this morning, right now, uh, pretty much an hour ago, contracting with the state of Montana, a how-to workshop. So, University of Montana, come spend a morning, learn how to pursue government contracting with the state of Montana, which include government procedure techniques where to find bids and proposals, how to register as a vendor, register, uh, resident preferences, tips for winning state contracts, resources, questions, and answer sessions. So if you're going to start a business or if you uh, want to start like a food cart, you it's always good to get registered and permitted through the city of Missoula or local government because a lot of times you need licenses to be pretty much anything. In the city of Missoula, you actually need a, a license to be an artist, just so you guys know. Um, open hours in the makerspace in the Missoula Public Library start uh, at 10 a.m. this morning. It goes well until uh, 1, and then they have an hour break, and then they're going to have another deal from 2 to 6 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. And also, what usually hosts Tiny Tales and Storytime at the Missoula Public Library are happening at Empower Place at the Missoula uh, Food Bank and uh, Frenchtown, which is Storytime. So it's a good way for your kids to get involved with uh other uh, branch libraries that are associated with Missoula Public Library. Out to lunch, it's the last one starting at 11 and it goes until about 2 p.m. It's lunchtime. Put down your work and leave your uh, chairs. Um, take the kiddos on an outing, show off your town and guests and clients, all sorts of things. This is Missoula in its essence. This is a free event. They're going to be uh, playing Money Penny, which is a blues rock band today this afternoon so um enjoy it because uh, it's only gonna uh it won't start until next summer around june so this is your last chance to check it all out um it, the event is free the food vendors are not um spectrum discovery center is starting at 12 uh, 11 a.m this morning they're doing some bubbles but if you stay stick around long enough this afternoon they're gonna do some shadow stories um it's 350 uh for uh, anyone um, oh, four and over, but if you're under three, you get in free. CASA of Missoula Information Session. session. Uh, CASA is an organization that helps uh, young children a as an advocate for the kids during any kind of like um, co a court appointed uh, special advocate for children. And it's um, it's supposed to help children through a process if they're going through like a legal um issue like their parents are getting divorced and that kind of thing and helps protect the kids through this process as well because it puts the kids above everybody else which it should be um scrabble and bridge starting at 12 30. um hey missoula senior center they have a great dance floor but if you're interested in playing some scrabble and bridge you can do that and they do it most days around lunchtime middle school writers group uh happens uh 3.30 p.m. And why not? It's the week before school starts. Actually, school is starting today for a lot of younger kids. Um, freshmen at uh, Hellgate High School, from what I hear, is going to be starting school um, today. And then all the other teens are going to kick things off on Thursday with the first day of school. So this is the last chance for a lot of the older kids at MCPF schools to finally do anything, wake up late, do all sorts of wonderful uh, uh, full day activities, which include out to lunch. So those are some of the things that are happening during your day. If you guys are interested in going out and about tonight, Wednesday night is the place 
to enjoy some karaoke. So you have karaoke at the Badlander, you have karaoke at the Dark Horse, you have um, trivia at uh, Broadway Bar and Grill, Silver Slipper, you got Trivial Beer Suit at the Press Box, and all sorts of, uh, I think they have even bingo at Thomas Marr Bar tonight as well, so you might have to check that out. Um, but before I jump into your Thursday events, I do want to show you an art clip which will be ending this Friday at the Clay Studio. So you guys have only a couple more days to check this out. So here it is. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk some Thursday events. So Thursday, um, kicking off uh, all your Thursday is the typical indoor gymnastic sports arena type deals is the Mizzou Indoor Sports Arena, Mizmo Gymnastics, and of course Roots Acro Sports Center. They have a whole bunch of stuff for uh, kids who are 12 and under, um, and that happens from uh, usually about 9 to about 12 noon, and this is a great activity for your kids to get into gymnastics and get more physical but also in a safe and padded environment. So if you're afraid your kid will fall and hurt themselves, don't worry, most of this area is childproof because it is a gymnastics place. Spectrum, they're doing botany. Uh, smartphones and tablets are used with public library and introduction to an iPad or tablet users who would like to be more comfortable with their devices. Um, this will happen from 12 to about 1 at the Missoula Public Library starting th tomorrow. Um, spider Silk Under Microscopes. Missoula Insectarium does a bunch of fun events and a lot of um, uh, arts and crafts activities for kids. Spider Silk is used for more than creating webs. Silk is used throughout a spider's life from egg to adult, and they will touch on other uses of silk and view examples under the microscope. And you can join them this week to focus on the versatile silk. Downtown tonight, like I said, as um, Out to Lunch starts ending downtown tonight, will also end this week, starting from 5.30 and goes until about 8.30. Joan Zen will be playing her uh, funk and her soul out for the last um, event, and it is a free event to attend. They have beer gardens, so it's, it's like Out to Lunch, but they have uh, beer gardens for your Thursday night, so you guys can enjoy that. Narcotics Anonymous Meeting. Uh, so this is an open um, Narcotics Anonymous Meeting at the Genetic Can Hall uh, Room 203. Um, if you are struggling with addiction, this is the place to check it out. And they usually do this um, most weekly events that are happening, and this is at the University of Montana, Narconics Anonymous meeting. So here are some of your late night Thursday events that are happening if you're interested in going out and about to free your Thursday. Um, the Miseducation of Cameron Post with a special guest, and it's going to be a film at the Roxy, and they're going to have a special guest maybe talking about this film as well, so you can check that out. Uh, Moose Can Gully, there's the uh, South 39th leadership team meeting and that's at the Jack Reedy conference room at the city hall they'll be talking about what's going on at Moose Can Goalie. Cash for Junkers is happening uh, at the Top Hat Lounge starting at 8 p.m. Um, so you guys can enjoy that. Uh, Old Post is doing Michael Shaw and the Wildfires. It's going to be Bluegrass Band. They're going to heat things up in the right way, not like the wildfires up in Glacier. Rocking Karaoke hosted by Aaron B. Rocks is going to be at the Top dark horse so you can enjoy some karaoke as well for your thursday night so those are some of your events and more if you want more information you can go to missoulaevents.net hey i got a full show for you guys i want to thanks thank you again um kathy and brian from missoula asian services talking about all the uh wonderful um uh, uh kitchen um 
conversations. So it's uh, kitchen table conversations where people are going to be gathering up and just talking about um, kind of future plans for their health. So in case uh, they have a history of dementia and Alzheimer's, it's good to actually have a plan now. Um, to, so uh, your children and or caregiver, caregivers by proxy can take care of you the way that you want to take care, you want to be taken care of. But it's forward planning, so it's a good way, and it's also a good way for uh, people just to kind of engage and talk to one another. And this is for anybody who is um, between the ages of 18 and over, um, who have suffered an injury or who's afraid they might suffer from an injury, just um, in terms of health-wise. Um, a sense of mind and, and it's a good way to get a peace of mind as well because just because you have a will and a state plan doesn't mean you have a plan for your health and that's going to happen the first monday and wednesday of november at the missoula food bank and it's hosted by missoula agent services so i just wanted you guys to remind you once again that that's going to be happening in november and you better fill it um, the seats will fill it fast they have about 25 30 uh, people maximum capacity so you want to check that out before it happens so uh once again i want to thank you all for joining me this morning um and for wake up missoula i hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful week i'll be back friday mm -hmm.